I found out my twin sister is just an evil Karen. I don't want her in my life anymore, and this is why. Guys, my name's Mr. Reddito, and this is Mr. Reddito Stories. I have something very special for you today. It's a five update series on this said twin sister who, let's just say, is absolutely bonkers. It involves some inheritance drama. So, subscribe to the channel and let's get right to it. I see why my boss hates my twin sister so much. So, my bro, my older sister, my twin sister, and I were out for brunch. And we started talking about money. My twin sister exclaimed how she's so happy to get 100000 when I'm 25. I asked what she was talking about and said, You know, you're getting 300 k from that white man right? I can't wait for my share. That white man was my boss's father. He was the sweetest, bad-ass little old Dutch man you've ever met. He treated me like one of his grandchildren, and when he died, he left me a $300,000 in his will. I'm supposed to be getting it when I'm 25 years old, and the only rule to it was, in my opa's words, don't be selfish with it, ladybug. So, I was planning on keeping 100k for myself, 100k for my mother, and splitting the last 100k between my three siblings. But, my twin sister was bothering me since she found out about the money, saying how I should have given her the whole 100k because she's a mother with two kids. So, when my sister said that, my other two siblings say how it's not fair that my twin sister's getting the whole 100k. They have to share it. I remind them about the money situation. I told my twin that no, she's not getting the whole 100k, that she's splitting it between the other two. And I already told her. She started whining about how unfair that mom's getting 100,000 by herself. I reminded my sister that our mom deserves that money more than any of us at this table. And that she hasn't had a car, a vacation, or a firm mattress in years. And that she deserved that money because she took care of a snot-nosed brat. A.K.A. us. Well, my twin sister started arguing with me, saying that she should get the whole 100k and just split the other between the two siblings and let her have the 100k all to herself. I said, what the heck are you talking about? Mom and me? My sister reminded me that if I have 65k in the bank at the moment, that I should use that for me and mom. No, dear reader. I only have 65k in my bank account because I saved up money from my jobs and for college fund. And my boss gave me 50k for my college Christmas. I told my sister that I'm not touching that money, it's for my college, and that I work hard for my money. My sister laughed, saying, quote, huh, huh, Watching four kids and sucking beep isn't hard work. Ugh. My family's dirt poor, and I have to do what I need to do to survive. I will admit, I've done some odd jobs here and there, but... I've been through hell and back working for this damn family. To a point where I lost my mind. I'm in therapy for what I've been through. You're probably wondering, Alizé, why'd you stay if you're going through so much crap? Well, find me a job that's offering $400 every week. My sister knows about what I've been through working for my boss's family. All my siblings now know. So, my brother told me my twin sister shut the heck up, and that I don't have to give her anything. My older sister said, quote, If you're that desperate for money, why not sell the other car? My boss gave my twin a car because he has a soft spot for my nephews. Their old car was too small. My twin sister remarked that the car's not worth any value, and how she has more money by selling my nephew's chair. My heart sank, because somehow I knew that she was talking about, and in my head I was screaming, Please don't let it be the chair that my opa made for my nephew. P 
please don't let it be the chair that my opa made for my nephew. Please don't let it be the chair. My older sister asked, What chair? You know, the white chair with a pterodactyl on it that Alizé's grandpa made. My twin sister replied, I was furious. I asked how could she sell my opa's chair. Was a gift from my nephew and she did not have the right to sell it. My sister exclaimed how she's my nephew's mother and that whatever he owns is hers. I asked how much she made selling my grandpa's chair. She said just 30 bucks. Only because the wood was good quality. I wanted to strangle her with her stupid escot. Because my grandpa was an amazing woodcarver. That was his passion when he retired and spent his last two decades perfecting his skill. And it was some craftsmanship, all right. He'll take old pieces of furniture and make them new again, then give them away to homeless shelters or people in need. If you're having a baby and you would make a little merry-go-round thing for the crib, out of good wood for free. My grandpa donated a lot of his money to people who needed more than him. He was an amazing parent, and there's a plaque in his hometown, Square. It's dedicated right to him. So I started screaming this. Are you beep stupid? 30 beepin' dollars? 30? It's worth more than that. My sister said how it wasn't worth that much because it was unfinished. Then my twin sister proceeded to berate grandfather, calling him lazy and unprofessional and that he did a crappy job with the paint. Do you want to know why my grandpa could not finish the chair and he made for my nephew? It's because he got cancer and died shortly after starting the chair. So, it's not painted properly and only has one little bad pterodactyl on it. My twin sister knew about the whole chair situation, and I came to realize my twin sister was just a beep. And in that moment, it was like a pair of red sunglasses being left from my eyes, and I saw all the red flags that she produced. I finally truly understood what my boss sees her. She's an ungrateful evil jerk. I understand why my boss called her the 2.0 version of his daughter. I understand now. I see now what he meant when my boss said, why do you give a crap about her? She's just going to hurt you in the end. It all makes sense. For years, this scummy girl tortured me, messed me up physically and mentally. She will admit that she tortured me and laughed and played it off like it was a joke. I had to walk on eggshells around her to the point where I won't even talk around her because I'm just so afraid to say something, quote, stupid. I remember now as I type this out that I actually told my sister about what Lucifer did to me, the name I gave my boss's brother. And then she makes jokes about it not once but twice. When I try to confide in my freaking twin sister, she makes jokes about me being forced to give sexual acts and she won't kiss me on the face anymore because, quote, I don't want my lips to get pregnant. Or when she started calling me a deacon butt. I know how it could look like a weird name if you don't read much into it. Hell, my mom thought it was a weird version of chicken butt. No. It was my sister making fun of me for getting sexually abused. So, I was boiling at this point. So when she said, quote, Oh, I also hate his name, Warlock. I can't stand that name. And also, he could have left something in the will for me. I was around him too, you know. Warlock wasn't my grandfather's real name. That's the name of the immediate family calls him because he really couldn't stand his first name. And now I'm pregnant and I'm having a baby boy. I'm going to name my child after my grandfather. I love that man so much. So when she said all of that crap, it pushed me over the edge. I grabbed my cup of full apple juice with ice in it and dumped it right over her head. I started screaming and I left cursing her out in Dutch. 
I was crying on the highway when I called my fiancé to pick me up. I cried, I explained what happened, and he was just as pissed as I was, because that was his actual biological grandfather. My boss was so mad, he wanted to confront my sister, but I told him not to. At the moment, I don't want to talk to any of the family. I'm just going to drown myself in lemon Oreos. My sister tries to keep texting me saying how sorry she is, that she did not mean to make me upset. She realizes I'm the one with the money, but my brother's texting me, saying not to accept her apology, because she remembered I'm marrying into rich lines. I understand how I wasted my youth tending to her every needs and wants. I'm done being her freaking doormat. She's not invited to my wedding. I want my nephews I have a relationship with, my children, but I don't want her in my life, and I'm not giving her any money. I'm about to go cry myself into a vegetative state with snacks. I know it wasn't my right to be upset by the chair, but I have memories of watching my grandfather make that chair, so it hurts a lot. And I like to point out that anything with my grandfather's signature of business on it is worth at least a thousand bucks, unfinished or not. Hey, what's up, guys? Mr. Redito here. So, just so you guys know, there's so many updates for this story, it gets insanely crazy. But first, there's a couple edits from the first post that I'll read before we hop into the update number one. The edits say, I know, I should not have ran my mouth about the money, but I thought I could trust them with the fact because they're my family and all. I'm going to make a college fund for my nephews. She's not getting a penny of that damn money. My mom's mad at me because my sister's family is struggling, and money will come in handy down in the future. But in the word of my grandpa once said, Sometimes these chicks need to keep their mouths shut. The people who said that I'll be disrespecting my grandfather if I give my sister the money, thank you for making me see that. She's not getting crap from me. Also, I might want to add this here. My sister is married, and I feel so sorry for her husband. The only reason why she needs money is because she keeps throwing parties and events. Edit 2. Her husband called me, apologizing for his wife's actions. I told him all the bull bull his wife pulled, and that I don't want my twin sister in my life anymore. But I do want a relationship with my nephews. We're going to sit down and talk this out tomorrow. I'm going back to sleep. Edit 3. It's 4 in the morning, and y'all's comments are lovely. Very lovely, and they're very eye-opening, and I realized my family is a lot more ducked up than I believed. It's just my boss's family, but we're so poor. My twin sister hurted me a lot more than I realized. She makes fun of me for being sexually abused when she did it to me herself when we were children. It's funny in the dunked up way. My mom is not off the hook either. When she found out I was forced to forgive my sister, understand why because she felt guilty? She was crying, but it was years ago was her excuse. I love my mom and she did get better over the years, but she's such a much of a rug sweeper. It's making me angry. So when I asked to go to therapy because, and I quote, I'm your therapist, even though my mom is part of the problem. And when I get a therapist, I wasn't allowed to talk about my self-harming. The boss gave me a new therapist now, and when I told my mom about my self-harming, she was worried. As a mom should be. But she also told me not to do it ever again because, and I quote, it's what white people do. Yes, me cutting myself and choking myself with a belt is white people crap, apparently. The only meaning that we're having tomorrow is I want my grandfather's chair back. My sister isn't getting crap from me, and I'm just going to buy my mom the things she needs. I can't go back to sleep now, so me and my boss are about to play some Minecraft. I'm going to talk to my therapist in the morning because I opened up some old wounds and they refused to close. I need to be properly healed because 
I can't stop crying. My family's so messed up. Oh, my life's a Tyler Perry movie, and I hate it. Also, I should add, my mother never told me I had autism. I don't know why she decided not to tell me, but she never told me. Well, guys, I told you, this one is a crazy one. That was just the first part. There's so much more to come. Right now, my opinion on this is, I think OP definitely should not have told her family about any of the money, especially the inheritance and how much it really is. There's one comment I'd like to check out on this one before we hop into update number one. It states, If I were you, I wouldn't have told your family about the money. When family knows you're coming into money, they start acting entitled to it even though it's not theirs. You should sit on the idea your sister had and think about not giving your twin any of the money. She might need it, but she clearly doesn't deserve it. Let me know if you agree with that in the comment section below. Here comes part two. So, we talked today. It was a crap show. My English is not the best, so I'm sorry. My boss, let's call Mr. Smith. Actually haven't used that name for a while. My fiancé, Oz, my Mr. Smile's nephew. And I sat down with my twin sister and her husband. Oz and Mr. Smith are mad because my sister disrespected their father slash grandfather. And right off the back, my sister started apologizing, saying she did not mean to hurt my feelings. She should have realized just being selfish, but she didn't. She was boo-hooing and saying how we are sisters and we should not have money let it get between us. Yada, yada, yada. And like the dumb butt I am, I ate it up. I started crying hard. She got up to hug me and I was about to do the same thing. But Mr. Smith grabbed my arm and set me back down. Don't fall for this girl. She doesn't change. H snapped at Mr. Smith, telling him not to call his wife a jerk. Oz told me not to give a dang because twin sister just tried to manipulate me like she always has been. And remembered that she sold our Opa's chair. I was like, yeah, she sold my Opa's chair. I asked who twin sister sold the chair to, and that I was willing to pay money for it to get it back. And, like the greedy jerk she is, my sister gave up the information with ease. She sold it to one of H's cousins, but H exclaimed how it was too late and the chair was already a wooden ring. He showed us a picture of it on his phone. My boss was screaming at him, and H was confused. He said that my sister already had my boss's permission to sell the chair. We just looked at twin sister. Twin sister started crying more, apologizing, saying how if she would have asked, we would have said no. So much yelling. It was going back and forth. Mr. Smith and Oz were calling my sister a lot of names, saying how she's a liar and H was trying to settle all of them down. Then my sister had realized I wasn't talking and got mad at me, saying how could I just sit there and let them berate her and not defend her? Honestly, I wasn't saying anything because I'm afraid I'm a scared little girl. I'm still afraid of my twin sister. I started shaking and crying. Oz and Mr. Smith started freaking out, trying to calm me down because one stress on the baby isn't good, and two, the last time I freaked out was really bad, to the point I bit down on my hand, and I broke the skin. I also have autism, so yeah, me freaking out won't be good. My baby did not like what I ate this morning and tried to force it back up, so I vomited. All over my sister's pants. She ran to the kitchen sink while I ran to the kitchen garbage to vomit more. I started crying, mourned, because I hate vomiting. And my sister was screaming at me because I vomited on her expensive pants and called me a ducking idiot. Oz yelled, She's pregnant, you moron! Everyone stopped and looked at me. I looked at Oz because, well, we wasn't supposed to tell anyone. Until we go to the doctor. 
Everything has been backed up, so we can't get to the doctor until late October. Then my sister became sickly sweet, asking if it was true. I just nodded because I tried to say something, but vomit came out. So, this is what Odd told me because I had my face buried in a garbage can. Twin sister was smiling and coming up to me saying how she's going to become an aunt. When my boss stepped in front of her, he told her to leave and they started arguing. Oz helped me up by putting me into a room and tried to get me away from the noise. Because, honestly, I was covering up my ears and telling them to stop screaming. I was sitting on my bed and Oz was making me use my inhaler because I was having trouble breathing. I was just freaking out bad. Oz was trying to calm me down when my sister came in and made me choose between my boss or her. Oz said this, Do you really think she will choose you? And my sister explains how I'm her sister and nothing breaks a twin sister's bond. So... I just looked at her like, I don't know how to describe. So, I'm going to put it in Oz's words. It was like a red airplane flying overhead with a banner. See this? This is a red flag. I looked at my sister and then my boss and thought about the all good Mr. Smith did for me. He's everything to me. When I had no one, Mr. Smith was there. When I was sad, depressed, suicidal, or just wanted to be around someone, he was there for me. He came and paid for every art show, guitar, violin, piano, recital. He bought me all my instruments. He bought my first computer and he treated me like one of his own. He encouraged me and he pushed me to be greater than I think I am. He never discouraged me. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. He's my best friend. He applied me with so much alcohol. <laughs> he protected me from my family and his. He opened up his house to me. He did not have to, but he did it anyways. I love him. Then I thought about all the things my sister did for me. It's love there. It truly is. But there's a lot of misery and regret. So I took a deep breath and said with all the pride my broken mental state ass could produce... Get the hell out of my dad's house. She was flabbergasted and I had a smile on my face. The boss screamed, You heard the witch! Get the duck out! My sister was like, You're gonna regret this. <laughs> okay. And she stormed off. Not before she grabbed my tablet off the shelf and threw it at my head. It missed as I dodged it and smashed right into the wall, shattering the screen. As she stormed it out of the house, she screamed this. You're going to be a terrible mother. And I screamed back, I'm going to be a better mother than you. After that, I just broke. I became a crying mess. It's been a few hours since and I talked to my mom about the money situation. I'm willing to buy her the things she needs, but she's not getting my money for herself. If she wants, if she has to go through me. Oz and Mr. Smith are proud of me. I don't know how to feel. I'm sad and scared, and I'm questioning things. This is a setback, and it hurts my therapy, and my paranoia is through the roof right now. If I want a relationship with my nephews, I can just go to my mom's house since she watches them. So, I'm not worried about all that. I'm tired. But Grandpa, thank you. You greeted me with open arms and love. You're the most kind-hearted man I ever met and I'll never forget you. It's still hard for me to walk in Grandma's house and not see you sitting in your chair. I still play your voice recordings of you singing the little dudes. And they just miss you. They just miss you as I do. And I played it for their sister also. The boss has custody of her and we don't know where her dad is. I think that's a good thing. She doesn't remember you, but I'm going to tell her all about you, Grandpa. She turns two in a few months and she's a ball of energy, just like her brothers. Your other grandchildren are still the same, but the middle one is talking more in public. 
He's doing a lot better than he was. My boss is doing his best to be a good dad and uncle. You raised a good man. He's an amazing person, and I see you in him. It's all the time. He got back in contact with his youngest daughter, and they go for coffee once a week. They're making up. I finally convinced him to go to therapy. He stopped drinking, and at the moment, I'm trying to get him to stop smoking. He's better, but sadly, he caught cancer. But we did catch it early, and he's going to chemo. I'm taking care of him like you asked me to. I'm mad we could not get your chair back, but I still have the memories and the pictures of you making it. And I wish you were here just to hold your very first great-grandchild. If it's a boy, we're going to name after you. And I'm going to tell them all about you, Grandpa. And <laughs> you're so badass. You don't give a crap and you put Karens in their place. Well, to change the mood... The kids come back from the outing with Grandma, and when they left the house this morning, they had normal clothes on. So, when they came back dressed as ducks, I asked what happened to their normal clothes. One of the twins looked me in the eyes and straight up said, We don't know, just got caught up with quack. I can't even be mad at that. Do y'all want more stories about my grandpa? Because I have one story that's my favorite. And it's when he called a Karen, a uh, low battery, please charge, sounding ass jerk. He called her that because, well, we just got him a Bluetooth headphone and did not like the voice. I miss you, Opa. Hey guys, Mr. Redito here. I found another post called, My sister is holding my nephews for ransom, trying to ruin my relationship with my fiancé and got our dad involved. She wants my full inheritance. It's another update to the original story. Let's get right into it. So, a couple days ago, my brother-in-law called me and said, Hey, your mother's in a lot of pain and she's tired. Can you watch my kids? I gotta go to work. I wanted to see my nephew, so I said yeah. Quick recap for those people who don't click on the links above. My twin sister messed me up physically and mentally for years. And I just found out that because she wanted a lot more of my inheritance money that I was originally giving to her, and she sold my grandfather's chair. However, everyone found out she's a jerk because she decided to push me at her son's birthday party. So she's not talking to me. She blocked me on everything, and she's blaming me for her actions. However, I've been checking up on her and her husband, and she's losing her stuff. But she's still not letting me see my nephews, until I give her, quote, her portion of my inheritance. My nephew spent about five hours here. Then my phone rings. Picked it up, and my twin sister immediately started yelling at me. Why do you have my kids? I told her to calm down, and she started yelling at me more. Why do you have my kids? You know you're not allowed to be around my kids anymore. Mom watches them. They're going to mom's. I remind my sister that our mother's handicapped and she cannot chase a toddler around and take care of three-month-old baby by herself anymore. That's why I always go over there to help. Well, apparently, I'm not allowed to speak or see my nephews because I won't give her my inheritance money. And she was on her way to see or pick him up. She hung up and I immediately called my brother-in-law. He said he would meet twin sister there and try to calm her down. My brother-in-law beat twin sister and arrived first. A few minutes later, twin sister arrived and started arguing in the driveway. I was from the upstairs window because I wasn't in the mood to deal with her. My fiancé took the kids outside and put them in my brother-in-law's car, then they left. About five minutes later, my twin sister called me and explained how I shouldn't talk to her, to talk to her husband, that I chose my family and I kicked her out of my life. I said, what about my nephews? Y'all, I heard the smugness through the phone. Well, if you see my kids, I would like that 100k you promised me. No. I want the whole 300k. I deserve the back for all the trouble you caused me. 
I sat there dumbfounded. I asked, you want all my inheritance now? And my sister said, well, if you want to see your nephews, yeah. She's holding my nephews hostage because I won't give her some of my inheritance. And now you want all my money? I just hung up the phone. Mess that noise. My brother-in-law apologized for twin sister again and said, This is not your fault. Stop apologizing. He said hopefully me and twin sister can be sisters again. But I told him that probably won't be any time soon. I told my boss what happened when he came home and he just shook his head and said, I'm too old for this shit. However, this is not over. So, this morning, Oz, my fiancé, woke me up and explained that we need to talk. He asked me if I ever slept with Zeke, a friend of my boss. It's a fake name we're using for the story. I was confused. Oz shows me his phone and my twin sister, like the jerk she was, sent my Oz old screenshots of conversations with me talking about my sexual experience. See, my sister likes to get other people in trouble. She did this with all of our siblings. If twin sister is in trouble, she would use something you have done or told in confidence to get you in trouble. Just to get the heat off of her. So, my twin sister told my fiancé about all the sexual things I did with the caption, She's not so innocent as she seems. I originally told Oz that Zeke was just one of those peoples that I did something strange for a little change for. However, the screenshots that my sister sent him explained the truth. That Zeke and I was in a four-month relationship. So, me and my twin sisters are dirty wasters. I went into great detail about the relationship and I understand why Oz was upset. It was supposed to be a one-time thing. Zeke got back with his ex-wife and I felt like he used me and we never spoke about it again. I never told Oz about it because it's kind of hard to explain. I was 18 years old who slept with a damn near 50-year-old man. It wasn't healthy for me either. I got attached to him. He apologized, but I never really told anyone about it besides my sister and one of my boss's kids. I'm friends with his kids, and the last time I talked with him was when I was playing Phasmophobia with his daughter. We are friends now, but it took me a long time for them to be in the same room as Zeke. Oz and I talk some more, and things settle down, but this isn't over. Enter my dad. So, I've been getting a lot of calls recently from numbers I don't recognize, and I don't answer them. But this morning, I woke up to a phone call. I thought it was one of my friends, so I answered it. I was surprised when an angry Egyptian man started cussing me out. Alizé, what did you do? I was like, who's this? Then he yelled at me in Arabic, and I realized it was my father. He started screaming, saying how I'm really hurting my sister. I'm taking food out of his grandchildren's mouth that my sister needs that money. I don't respond to anyone talking to me in Arabic. You can talk to me in English, but in Arabic, I will not respond to you. I don't call myself Egyptian because I try to disconnect myself from my father. And the only time I talk to him is when to check in on him because he's currently dying. So I said, Dad, I'm not going to talk to you if you keep talking in Arabic. Speak English. He stopped and talked to me in English. It was quiet then and he started ranting on about how I could disrespect my culture, blah, blah, blah. I just hung up on him and did not take any more of his calls. Then I went back to sleep. Until the boss came in and on the phone says, my dad was at our old house screaming at his nephews, who are the new owners. I rolled out of bed and drove to the old house, and when we arrived, my sickly dad and my stepmom was yelling and banging on the old front door looking for me. I just rolled down the window, and they both charge at the car and ask my dad, 
What the heck was he doing? They immediately started screaming at me out of breath. You are ungrateful, child. You disrespectful. Your sister does everything for you. You've always been jealous of her, her business, her successful career, of her husband. And you're jealous that you're single and don't have a man and no one will love you because you're fat and ugly. This is usual from them because my twin sister was the favorite among the two of us. I didn't really recognize it until after I got older. T.S. twin sister got breaks, more food, got prettier clothes, and my mom always was mad when dad gave her twin sisters things, and then they gave me nothing. My father's other children took their hatred for my twin sister and put it all on me. The only one I bonded with was my transgender sister. Eventually, I stopped going over there because I was getting sick and tired of being mistreated. Oz rolled up the window and asked what I wanted to do. Call the big guns or call the cops. I was sad, tired, and I wanted to go back to sleep. I don't want my sickly father and stupid stepmom to go to jail. I looked at my dad as my stepmom spit on and bang on the window, then said, Call the Calvary. Who's the Calvary? Do y'all remember Philip? You know, that six foot eight, three hundred pound, pure muscle tattooed Muslim man with autism that can crush your head between his hands without even trying? So, the man that lives in my boss's old house was Philip. He came out pissed as hell. My dad and stepmom cowered immediately when they saw him. He stood by the car door and just looked terrifying as usual. My fiancé and I got out to talk to my sperm donor. I took a deep breath and calmly asked what they were looking for. My dad, like the stubborn guy he is, started screaming again, but with one aloud, Shut up! From Philip, he immediately stopped. I sighed and told my dad to go home. It's too early for them to be out. My stepmom looked me up and down and called me a beep because I was in my nightgown and not wearing pants. Oz took one look at my stepmom and commented on her mustache. She covered her mouth and I bust out laughing. My dad was about to yell again, but stopped and remembered that I was using my guide dog privileges, a.k.a. Philip. My stepmom told Oz that he was rude, and my dad asked who he was. I introduced Oz as my fiancé. They were shocked. Now, when I say Oz is out of my league, I'm Jabba the Hutt, and he's Princess Leia. Yeah, that level out of my league... Maybe it's because he's constantly high or that he's dumb that Oz is willing to settle this low. So, if you're low life, fat as beep, unattractive, daughter tells you she's marrying this redheaded ex football player man child, eyebrows will be raised. My stepmom called me a liar and I just pointed to my engagement ring. <laughs> Oz shook out his hand to my father and said, Nice to meet ya. Dad. My dad just stood there. This man has called me every name under the sun to make sure I knew I was trash, and no man will ever love me. It finally hit him that I am lovable, and I can get a man that's built like a Greek god. And it really pissed him off, to be honest. See, my dad wanted me to marry a man from his home country, to a point where he would try to set up arranged marriages and try to sell me off to the most disgusting man you ever saw. He started screaming, You can't marry this man. You can't marry this man. You can't marry this man. I'm your father. You have to listen to me. Philip was about to step in, but Oz beat him to it. Shut up, you two-faced jackass. You're just a beep and a catty ass T.S. My dad said that Oz shouldn't have called his daughter a jerk. And Oz screamed, What the duck is Alizé then? Because you've been calling out her name, insulting her this whole time. You're a poor excuse for a man, and God, I hate you. Now, you have two options. 
stay, and this huge mother ducker, gesturing to Philip, can make you die quicker. Or you could also stay, and this dude, points to Philip again, charges you with trespassing, and that person behind you, the cop who lives across the street and's witnessing the whole thing, can arrest you. So, are you gonna piss off? My stepmom was like, So, you're just going to sit there and let this man insult your father like this? And Oz said, He isn't her father. Any man can be a dad. It takes a real man to be a father. With that, my father let out a, Urgh! And stormed off to the car, dragging his wife with him. After that, I just needed a hug. I did not cry, so that's good. It was a weird experience, but I needed to do that. I needed to confront my dad, even though I did not like to talk. It still felt good to get it off my chest. I thanked the Calvary for helping me, and he told me to pay him back in pizza. And now I'm getting phone calls and text messages from relatives that I haven't talked to in a long time. Because my dad went to my Instagram, took one of my photos of me and Oz, and acted like a proud father on Facebook, saying he's proud that his lovely daughter is engaged. Thank God he doesn't know I'm pregnant. At this point, my opinion is OP should just cut her sister off. I am glad that OP's standing up for herself, but man, this is starting to get drama-filled. Okay, there's one comment I want to read before we hop into another segment. It states, Personally, I would cut your sister off. She's ruining her nephew's relationship with you. Do not give her any money. Say you give the money away to a charity if your sister asks. Or just don't tell her you have it. To be honest, the only person who seems to support you is your transgender sister. You do not own money to any of these people. What do you guys think about that? Drop it in the comment section below and I would love to hear your opinion. Here comes the next part of this story. My sister is an a-hole. This just happened. So, I'm in the family group chat talking about my baby. Then, my brother-in-law came in and said, You should kill that baby like you killed the first one. That baby's going to be miserable. You should just get rid of it since you already have experience in that field. <sighs> well then. Okay, back in the early part of 2020, I got pregnant when I was 19. I had an abortion and soon found out because... I don't want my mom to know, but my boss's daughter found out and her. And the jerk of mother started giving me crap for it. To a point where I tried to kill myself. Then my boss's daughter told my mom and tried to ruin my relationship with her. It didn't work. But the only thing that happened is I can't live in my mom's house anymore because it's tainted for me. It's brought my mom and I together, and now my mom doesn't hate my boss like she used to. I still am not over the abortion, and it's still hard for me to not cry. So, the shit my sister said, yeah, felt like a punch in the gut. How do I know it was my sister instead of my brother-in-law? Because my brother is not an a-hole, and my sister's mute in the chat. So, yelling about me through her husband's cell phone is the next best option. I'm not going to deal with that today, and it's not even noon yet. I'm running on three hours of sleep, and I'm going to play Stardew Valley. <laughs> Try to date Sam and go back to bed. Also, can we talk about how much my sister bounces between not believing I'm pregnant than believing? I don't know. I just think she needs a muzzle. Well, guys, <laughs> I got some good news, even though this last part was kind of bad or dark. Anyways, OP has finally got a duck. She named it Grapes. Let me read you this comment before we hop into the final update. It states, Safety first. Take care of yourself. Take all the time you need to heal. Also, don't forget to block her too. And finally, enjoy your farm and Sam. I love your pets. OP responded to this comment and this is where it gets interesting. I am being safe. I'm trying to take care of myself and be better and stronger for my family and my future crotch fruit. 
she already blocked me, and I'm enjoying, enjoying my farm. I finally got a duck and named it Graves. Okay, guys, here comes the final update. Yeah, I guess this goes here as well. I feel like y'all appreciate this too. So, this happened last night. My English is not the best, so forgive the grammar mistakes. Also warning, this is going to get dark, kinda. It was about 3 a.m. when I woke up to my phone going off. TS is for twin sister, and this is a short version of the text message. Alize, Alize, I'm sorry, please talk to me. Alize, Alize, please respond. Me, thinking it was my dad. Duck off, dad, it's three in the morning. This is twin sister. Oh, duck off, twin sister, it's three in the morning. I need to talk to you, please hear me out. Didn't tell you not to talk to you or your family. That was in the past. Time to focus on the present. Didn't I block you? I took y'all advice and blocked her ass. Twin sister was dodging the question and says, Don't worry about that. I just need to talk to you. It's really important. It's about your nephew. Now, my nephews are everything to me, so when I saw that, my attitude did change. What's wrong? Is he okay? No. He needs emergency surgery that can save his life. The doctor found something wrong with his heart, and little Junior needs surgery, or else he's not going to make it. We don't have the money for it. That's why I'm turning to you. I know we have our difficulties in the past, but I need you to give me that money for little Junior. I fell for this because my brother-in-law's family does have a history of heart problems, and my nephews are everything. I was crying, and my boss has power of attorney. I believe that's what it's called, and I can take some of my money out of my inheritance. I don't want my nephew to die, he just turned two. How much? A uh, hundred and thirty-three thousand. Oh, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. This means so much to the family, more than you can think. Then something hit me. See, my boss and my brother-in-law are very close. Like, talking on the phone every night close. Because my boss doesn't want my brother-in-law to turn into him. To be a doormat. He doesn't want my brother to feel like he has to stay in an unhappy marriage, always having it out through my boss. Well, the night before this... My boss was talking to my brother, and he did not say anything about my nephew's health. In fact, my brother-in-law showed off my nephew's Halloween costume, and my nephew looks so darn adorable and healthy. I feel like an idiot, but I thought about twin sister, and maybe she's telling the truth. Maybe they found out that my nephew's health is not moment, so I wanted to test her. My brother-in-law is not with her at the moment, so this was a perfect time. So, I talked to my brother-in-law. Twin sister, are you lying? What? Why would you do that? You couldn't leave well enough alone, can you? Yep, I'm stupid. I didn't say shit to him. Why the heck would I do that? Using with your nephew's health to squeeze money out of me, that is low. Ugh. You're so selfish. Give me that money. You won't give me it, so I have to do what I have to do. So, you decide to lie about your son needing medical surgery that can possibly save his life? What the heck is wrong with you? No, what is wrong with you? You think you're hot shit flaunting around your wealth? Taking pictures of you and your fiancé and posting them everywhere? You're just trying to upstage me and the family as rich. You don't need the money. Give it to me, and I can put it to good use. Ha, <laughs> just piss off. I'm so stupid for falling for that. Are you still pregnant? Uh, that one stunned me because she does not ask about my pregnancy. She flip-flops between being rude about it and also not believing. What? Are you still pregnant? And if you are, you should kill yourself. I just stared at my phone. It wasn't something I was expecting from her. 
I should have been expecting it because she told me to kill my unborn child already. You should kill yourself and your baby, two birds with one stone. You already tried to kill yourself once, just go through with it this time. You're just going to be a terrible mother anyways, and no one loves you. Not mom, not brother, not sister, heck, not your boss. Not even your fiancé, not no one. We all hate you. And if you have that baby, it's going to hate you just like we do. So, just do it. And she would go on and on and on. She got to me. She broke me. I just laid back on my bed and cried while my twin sister was telling me to kill myself. So, I was just thinking that maybe she's right. Maybe I wouldn't be a bad mother, and this world's better off without me. It was my baby, or I'm just allergic to my twin sister's bullcrap, because I started vomiting all over my bed. I ran to the bathroom to vomit in the toilet, and my hair got in the toilet as well. So my hair was covered in vomit and doo-doo water, and I was crying. Then I was surprised to feel a tiny baby hand patting on my back. I looked up to find the youngest son, Peter, patting my back, saying, It's okay, let it out. He's the sweetest little four-year-old I've ever met. Eventually, Peter left and came back with his dad, and my boss immediately went to dad mode when he saw me. My boss helped me up and washed my hair for me. He was drying my hair, then I asked, Do you love me? My boss thought I was joking, but realized I was serious. Twin sister got under my skin. My boss said, Ladybug, I wouldn't be taking care of you, high yellow ass, if I didn't love you. That made me cry even more because I feel I did not deserve his love and told him as such. He was consoling me when I said, I'm going to be a bad mom, that I'm going to duck up with this kid, and that I'm already ducking up with this kid. Then Peter said, as he ate out of a box of mini wheats, You're doing your best, and that's okay. He just shrugged, put another handful of mini wheats in his mouth, and went to his room. Peter doesn't know how much those words helped me. After this, my boss chilled with me until I fell asleep. I did not tell my husband what happened last night, and he knows that if he pushes things, I will bury them. So, when I show my boss the messages that my sister sent me this morning, I don't know how you would describe how it felt in that moment other than, I want to commit murder face. He was so mad and I had to physically stop him from leaving the house and kicking my sisters behind. But one of those comments sent both of us over the edge. My twin sister said, Be careful around your boss. He might pull a that man on you. Twin sister means Lucifer. Lucifer forced me to give him sexual acts when I was 18 and proceeded to groom me and sexually abuse me when I was 19. Hell, I can say, quote, be careful around your sister. She might pull a twin sister on you. Because she did the same thing to me. Plus the several years of torment and her thinking my boss might do the same thing. I've never wanted to sick two violent-filled nine-year-olds on someone more than I want to do at that moment. The boss asked what I wanted to do. I told him I don't want my fiancé to know about this because I don't want to ruin his trip. And I want my mother to know. So that's what we did. We took screenshots of the messages and sent it all to my mother. And I'd never even seen that sassy French black woman pissed more before. And my boss told my brother-in-law it's because he has the right to know what his wife is doing. And that he felt like she isn't safe to be around kids. My brother-in-law gave my sister an ultimatum. To go to therapy and a psych evaluation or divorce. She's not getting the kids. I don't think they're getting a divorce, but my brother-in-law is over here with my boss and he's filing paperwork for a new apartment. My boss is helping him set it up. My twin sister is losing her mind. Calling my brother-in-law, my boss and I, going between pleading and begging to get the kids back or being a rambling mess. I'm okay after everything. 
I just need a hug and a I'm doing okay. Twin sister just got to me and I'm better than I was last night. The boss had a long talk and wanted me to know that I was loved and finished it with the usual, I love you. He responded in kind with a, I love you too. Now I'm about to crochet me a ghost and I'm highly debating with myself to give it boobs or not. Well, in the end of all this, it seems like OP is the one who's coming out on top. I know she's been through so much, but at least it seems she's happier now. There was one comment that I do want to read before we wrap this up. It says, The only things you have to do is make sure you are doing your best, and trying to avoid the mistakes your parents made with you. Give as much love as you can to your child, hugs and kisses, and tell them you love them as often as you can. Even if you make mistakes, your love will show them you care. And that you only want what's best for them. I think that was great advice and I had to read it to you guys. What do you think of this final update? I know a lot of you are so cheering for OP as I am. But drop it in the comments down below and let's talk about it. That's all the content I have for you guys today. I do hope you enjoyed this wild ride. If you did, the best way to support me is by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and checking out the stories tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. I'll catch you later.